Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. When it rains Acolyte news, it pours Acolyte news. And that is what we're going to be talking about once again. But stay tuned because in the second half of this video we have some new comments from Bob Iger, which may spell unfortunate news for the future of Star Wars on Disney+. And also, just one piece of housekeeping, we have some very exciting stuff coming up over on Patreon. I'm going to have the privilege of interviewing the fantastic Diana Leonisanto, Morgan Elsbeth herself. And not to mention one of the stars of Andor and Rogue One. Those are coming out later this month and the start of June. And the link to my Patreon is down below for full access to those. But no more jibber jabber, my dear friends. On to the Acolyte. Something which has come up in comment sections and in discussions is who is this guy? This furry Ewok-like mechanic appears in the character poster. And in one frame of the new trailer, he seems like he's someone who's going to help the Jedi with the investigation, and I think his species, whatever it is, is native to this Aldani-like world. But, he's not an Ewok. But it's pretty much an unspoken rule of Star Wars at this point. Every new project needs an adorable creature and a small droid. Usually does well for much. And speaking of droids, this new droid Pip, something that is not spoken about is the fact the person holding it is the other twin. Not the one who's turned to the dark side, but the other one. And today, my dear friends, we have two exclusives regarding what to expect from the show. One from Games Radar, and the other from Entertainment Weekly. A new look at Amanda Stenberg behind the scenes, as well as one or two stills. And one of the major reveals is that there was a lot of work that went into the choreography and the martial arts. And Amanda reveals one of her major influences was Hayden Christensen as Anakin Skywalker. Not surprising to most fans. And they also reiterate, aside from the Phantom Menace's influence on lightsaber fights, the last Jedi throne room scene between Rey, Kylo Ren and the Praetorian Guards similarly influenced some of the choreography. And I should also mention, my dear friends, we do have a new synopsis. And I want you to pay attention to the wording. They mention a conspiracy tied up with a former Jedi Padawan named Mei. But they don't reference the other twin and which one is which. Very much in line with what I've been talking about in recent videos. They say this, the eight episode series, and there we have confirmation season one is eight episodes, is set during a time of relative peace, when the Jedi loom large throughout the galaxy and the Sith have diminished to the point of becoming legend. Stenberg stars as a former Jedi Padawan named Mei, who finds herself embroiled in a mysterious conspiracy when several Jedi start turning up dead. So it's not just Master Indara who's gonna die, and we also have a new reveal of the style of fighting that we're going to see in this show, the martial arts, are Southern Chinese influenced, based on a martial art which in Cantonese is Wing Chun. And they reveal they spent six weeks in the preliminary stages before moving on to some things which were more advanced. So a lot of dedication for ultimately what is only going to be a few minutes on screen. The Acolyte showrunner and creator Leslie Headland developed the series with Stenberg in mind. And during the very first meeting, the writer showed Stenberg early concept art imagining their role in the show. And from the sounds of things, Amandler is kind of obsessed with Anakin Skywalker. She tried to channel Hayden Christensen. And something which Stenberg says she thought about is what does the galaxy look like before the true corruption? She says, quote, What does the world look like before the force is being used in that evil way? What preempts that kind of societal shift? And here is a very awesome reveal. Stenberg admits when she arrived on set, one of the main things she nerded out about were the Jedi on Coruscant at the Jedi Temple. I think it's a good thing the vast majority of the cast are Star Wars fans, but we'll have to wait and see. She also said she took a nap on the marble of the Jedi Temple set. Now there is an awesome brag to tell your mates. So that is basically the meat and potatoes. And one final thing for the Acolyte, just as John Watts said for Skeleton Crew and Dave Filoni for the Ahsoka show, the co-producers on the series admitted the Acolyte is very much a gateway, so this very much is an introduction to the High Republic for those who haven't read the books. I see this as a win, because most fans haven't. And so, as promised, Disney boss Bob Iger has reflected on their streaming initiatives. They invested too much. Now you might be wondering, well Meg, how does this affect Star Wars? Well, it seems like Bob is finally admitting the truth and being candid about the situation at Disney. He says when it comes to the streaming service Disney+, Plus, there is a culture and environment of regret. And he realises, for the amount of stories they've told, the revenue hasn't been great. And so according to Iger, they invested too much on the big franchises. He doesn't outright say Star Wars or Marvel, but let's be real, that is what's implied. 
to the point where he admits, we told too many stories. And later, as we're going to talk about, Iger is going to focus on budgets, saying he wants to bring those right down, but he doesn't want to compromise on quality and says he wants to work more closely with the creative teams, and concluded the synergy in combining all of the content to one platform so Disney, ESPN, Hulu, helps profitability, streamers getting more value for a cheaper price, consolidation with other streaming services as well, but also cutting back on traditional TV. But look, as I say, even though he doesn't mention Star Wars when it comes to anything on Disney+, Plus, he wants to consolidate volume with quality. In essence, put out good quality content, perhaps in a less frequent manner, instead of releasing multiple multi-million dollar shows every financial year. And he seems serious about tightening the budget. So at the moment, we're slated for Skeleton Crew and the Acolytes this year, but in 2025, and all season 2 is probably going to be the only live action show. We might have another season of Tales of the Empire or Tales of the Jedi, as well as Visions Volume 3. But when it comes to the flagship stuff, it's all dependent on what the consumer wants, and that is a priority he's finally admitting he's going to place. So, is that the Acolyte? Is the Acolyte what fans want? I guess the viewing numbers are going to tell when the show drops next month. But one thing for Bob is clear, if the viewing numbers continue to decline on shows which have like a 20 plus million dollar budget per episode, that is something he insists they're about to change. So this era of getting multiple Star Wars and Marvel shows every year is about to come to an end. The future of the Mandoverse is mixed between Mando and Grogu in 2026 on the big screen and Ahsoka Season 2, probably releasing in 2026 as well. Bob Iger goes on to say this, As we got into the streaming business in a very, very aggressive way, we tried to tell too many stories. Basically, we invested too much, way ahead of possible returns. It's what led to streaming ending up as a $4 billion loss. And reflecting on his falling out with former Disney CEO Bob Chapek, he regretfully states, It was clear to me that our structure was not working, because we were removing accountability from those that were basically investing the most capital. And so, what is the solution? Well, in very vague terms, he says this, reinstalling a link between the creative and monetization sides to help guide what's being made and to listen to the consumer. And he acknowledges, Disney is not doing as well as Netflix. And he says, volume and not quality turned out to be a mistake. I mean, that's obviously true. And he reiterates, good isn't good enough. It has to be great. And you know, in recent years, Disney has a history with clashes between creatives and the monetization side. The history of Pixar is a great example of this. And I'm fine with less Star Wars content if it means more quality Star Wars content. They're not going to stop releasing Star Wars shows and Marvel shows on Disney+, Plus, but the volume is going to be reduced. And as aforementioned, the focus is going to be giving franchises a bigger presence, both in theatres, in cinemas, and in pop culture generally. And that is focusing on the quality. He also kind of alludes to revamping the Disney Plus structure, and we have heard rumours of various merging possibilities with other studios and other platforms, but here Bob is being very candid. 